Last time on Mastering AMC 1012, we covered geometric probability and saw how it can be used to solve infinite combinatorics problems. Today, we're going to talk about expected value. So the expected value is just a weighted average of outcomes. And how do we calculate this? Well, it's basically just, you can look at this or let's see how it actually is an example because I assure you it's not that complicated as it looks. What's the expected value of a dice roll? This is a good example to start with. So what we do is we multiply the probability of, of an event happening times whatever number is associated with that event. In this case, the dice roll, because we're trying to find the expected value of that dice roll. So probability of rolling one is a sixth. Probability of rolling a two is another sixth. So on, all the way till six is a sixth. So the expected value is just the sum of all of these. So in this case, it's 3.5 because all the rolls from one to six are equally likely. But there's a shortcut in this case because it's symmetric. All the numbers from one through six evenly covered. Just take the average of one and six, 3.5 directly. Because one plus six divided by two is seven over two. And it's symmetric for all values in between. 2 and 5 are symmetric, 3 and 4 are symmetric, about 3.5. So you don't always have to do this giant sum. And now that we understand what it means, what this is saying is xi is the value and p of xi is the probability, and we're just summing this product over all such values. Okay, now here is the most powerful theorem in expected value. Linearity of expectation. What is linearity of expectation? Linearity of expectation is that the expected value of n events is the expected value of each event individually. It doesn't even matter whether they're dependent on each other or not. So for example, if you're trying to find the expected number of days of rain in a year, you can just find the probability it rains every single day of the year and add them up. Because the probability it rains every single day of the year is just each of these terms over here. And this will be the total expected value or the total number of days it rains in a year. And it's extremely powerful. And we're going to see a simple example of that right here. Five balls are arranged around a circle. One, two, let's number them, three, four, five. Chris chooses two adjacent balls at random and interchanges them. Then Silva does the same, with her choice of adjacent balls being completely independent of Chris's choice. What's the expected number of balls that occupy their original positions after these two successive transpositions. So let's, let's use linearity of expectation. I know it's a fancy word, but it's super powerful. Let's find the probability that each individual ball will be back to its original position after those two transpositions. So what are the ways for a ball to, to stay in its original position or go and come back even? Well, first of all, what's the probability? It won't be selected for any of the transpositions. Well, first of all, Chris chooses two balls. So three fifths of the time, a ball won't be chosen for a transposition. Let's say he flips one and two, for example. Then three fifths of the time, it won't change. Now Silva does the same. So what's the probability that Silva also doesn't pick up specific ball? Right now we're talking about a, just one ball, not all of them, just five, let's say. So there's a three-fifths chance five won't get flipped by Chris, and there's a three-fifths chance it won't get flipped by Silva because they all have equal probability, three-fifths. Two-fifths of the ball swapped, three-fifths not. There is a 9 over 25 chance that the ball 
does not get moved at all. Now, what about if maybe after two moves, it returns back? So, what if Chris moves some ball some way, and then Silva just moves that ball back? Hmm. Let's take it. We're gonna again take a look at ball number five. Let's say maybe it was chosen. Maybe it was chosen. Let's say five and one were flipped. Let's say. If we flip five and one, then this would be one here, and this would be five over here. Okay. Now, what if Silva undoes that? So, what's the, prob the probability that 5 was chosen originally as one of the balls? 2 fifths, right? Out of all the balls, 2 of them are swapped. 2 fifth chance swapped by Chris. Okay. Now, what if Silva, what if it's also picked for the second swap with Silva? There's a 2 fifth chance. Of that as well because it can be picked again equal probability even if it's in a different location that doesn't matter maybe it's here now that doesn't matter it still has a two-fifth chance but what other ball would Silva be picking in that case if Silva then swaps 5 and 2, then 5 will not be returning it to its original position. So in this half chance, 5 ball will be going 2 places away from its home. So times 0. Now, what if it gets flipped with 1 and go, does go back to its original spot? There's a half chance of that happening as well. In half, and in this case, it is in its original position, so times 1, probability of this case. Now the reason there's a half probability for each is because, well, it's random, so there are equal probabilities of switching 5 on the left side with 5 and 1, or the right side, 5 and 2. And now what is this over here? This is just, this is 0, this is half, half times 2 fifths, times 2 fifths, equals 2 over 20 fifths. Okay, that's great. Now, now, how can we finish the problem from here? So from here, we just see that in total, it has 11 over 20 fifths probability of, of being at its original position at the end. So for five balls, that's 11 over 20 fifths times 5. Linearity of expectation. Because the probability that every ball goes back to its original position is just 11 over 25. So 11 over 25 chance, 11 over 25 chance, 11 over 25 chance, the overall expected value is just that times 5. Linearity of expectation in action gives us an answer of 2.2. Okay, now we're going to move on to another problem. This one a little bit more tricky. What is the average number of pairs of consecutive integers in a randomly selected subset of five distinct integers from the set? Oh my gosh, that seems like a scary casework problem, right? What if you select all five next to each other, then one more left, then one more left? That would be li literally hundreds of cases, and we don't have time for that here. How can we use expected value here? And to be more specific, the linearity of expectation literally is the king of expected value in this case. Remember, here's his average number of pairs, but that's the same thing as expected number of pairs. They're the same. They're just different words for it. So what are the expected number of pairs when we choose five integers? Now, 
try to think of what, how we can use linearity of expectation. We can use it on each pair. Well, the pairs are one, two, two, three, three, four, so on till 2930. There are 29 pairs. So now let's just find the probability that each one of these will be chosen. What's the probability? The pair one, two will be chosen. Well, the probability that pair one, two will be chosen or will be in the five integers, the group of one, and two. Let's find that. First of all, how many, how many subsets exist with one and two? Well, there's 28 remaining elements then. And from there, we must choose three remaining elements because two elements gone, Three elements left for the, our subset, of course, and 28 elements left to choose from. And they all have an equal chance of being in the subset. 28 choose 3 versus this is how many subsets include 1, 2 versus how many choices of 5 integers. That's 30 choose 5. So this is the probability that. 1, 2 will be chosen. Let's simplify it a little bit using 2's notation. 28 times 27 times 26 divided by 6 over 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26 over 120. This is why we don't multiply that. So we can just cancel. Let's just cancel a bunch of terms. 28, 28, 27, 27, 26, 26. Hmm, that seems to be about it. Let's multiply by 120 to the numerator and denominator. This gives us 20 over 30 times 29. Okay. Let's simplify it indeed. These cancel, we're left with 2 over 87. So 2 over 87 is the probability that one of these pairs of integers is chosen. But that's just one. We're asked to find the expected amongst all 29. Linear of expectation is going to do its trick again. 2 over 87 chance per pair of numbers. So, because there's 29 pairs, 2 over 87 times 29 equals 2 thirds. Isn't that cool? How we just simplified this whole problem with linearity of expectation. It would be an impossible thing to do without linearity of expectation. So two thirds is their answer. Two thirds. And that is the answer in this case. Okay, next off we have recursion. Recursion is solving problems for small values and writing a recursive equation to iteratively calculate it. And this is super powerful because you can make large number problems just a simple f of n plus, equals f of n minus 1 plus something else. And we're going to talk about that more next time. You can click on it right here.